up. Where do I talk? Do I talk the into top. this thing? The into the top. Oh, yeah. Right. Testing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This probably has a conference with But then you can get out of a vein. There's rivers underground. Well, yeah. yeah. In Manitoba, we had one, two, three, four, four wells in the yard and didn't have enough, enough to water the stock. So my dad dug a big dugout in the pasture. But our neighbor, for a mile away, you couldn't pump his well dry. Yeah. Well, you had four wells just in there? Well, just in the farmyard. The, the, uh, there was one down by the barn, and there's one up there, there's two, another one up there, there's three. Uh, they'd be 150 feet apart, and the farthest one's apart. Why why four? Well, because you couldn't get enough out of one. Oh, and at different streams? Well, seepage is all it was, mm -hmm. actually, I guess. Mm -hmm. Then there'd be a spring someplace. It must have been on a spring, uh, the one we had at Airdrie. Well, they got that one still at the Calgary Brewery that taps into that underground river, eh? Well, that's just seepage out of the whole river. Is that? Sure. They yeah. always said it was an underground spring. Yeah, they were full of shit. <laughs> well, solid, that's how they made all their beer in that out of there. Solid gravel down there. Hmm. And they're only, what, about uh, two blocks from the river? Yeah. Yeah. Where was Lock? that? Yeah. Sure, it's just gravel down there. Where was that? Gravel. Oh, in Airdrie? Mm. Yeah. It's well filtered though, but the time it gets into that well of there. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever see down that well? Okay, I think I did. I'm not sure now. Do you? It's as clear as crystal. Yeah, I think it is. They got it in the building there. Yeah. Down, yeah. 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 They don't use it anymore, they just... Are they? No. Was that they use it for making the beer? Just there for show. Okay. You know, all that is now, they get their water out of the river. At least it's filtered through the gravel. Oh. Another well. Oh. <coughs> it up. Mice. <laughs> no, don't mention it. Gophers. Well, bringing up mice and gophers. No. Water it sure stinks. How the hell did that happen? Well, <laughs> I can tell you exactly how it happened. There was a hand dug well, and it was about six feet in diameter at the top. And it must have been. 30 to 40 feet deep. And uh, the water stunk. You see, it was an old well, wooden crib, yeah. and the cribbing was getting rotten, and gophers was getting digging in there and getting into it. Mice. And drowning? And drowning in the well. Oh. And then you'd pump a gopher up through the pump. Big rotten gopher. And I go down there to to clean that out, and I'd look back up, and all I could see is a hole about this big around up there. Because the well was so crooked. Oh, I wonder that damn thing didn't cave in on me. Yeah. <laughs> How'd you go down on a rope? And how'd you uh, get back up? <laughs> uh, 
How did I go down there? I went down on the road. Was it a ladder? Part way, I think there was a ladder. I think there was a ladder part way down, way down, you see. After you get down below the air circulation, the wood don't rot anymore. It stays good. Is that right? Oh. In those water? Even, even in the water. Huh. But when you get up about two, two feet from the ground level, that's where the air gets in around here, and the mud and slush and stuff, and that wood all rots around in there. Huh. That's where the motors are getting in. Oh, they're getting up higher. So if you cleaned it out, then what happens? Well, then you would bank it up and pack the dirt around it until finally a gopher would be that big and again. And then they'd get another gopher in. But what should, what should have been done, done was to put a crib inside of that crib oh, yeah. and made it new. Yeah. So you had to keep climbing down this well. Oh, I think you just did it. Well, I was down there about twice. I had to pull the pump out once or twice, too. I hauled a lot of water out of the river. Hauled a lot of water out of the river. Well, you only lived there a couple of years, didn't you? Two, three years. Well, they used to dig those wells by shovel? Sure. That's why they're crooked. Yeah. If you wasn't particular, the wells we had in Manitoba was all hand dug. Yeah. One of them was square. Yeah. Yeah, I had one in the farm that was big and square, but I never crawled down, I don't tell you. <laughs> well, it's not bad, it's only 20 feet deep. Yeah. But you get down to 40 feet, where it gets a long way down, it's like Ooh. going up an oil well. Yeah. Those four of us going to school. Dalton and I, Libby and Marge. Yeah. We had four miles to go. <laughs> and we had. Uh, Where did you go? Po with? Pony and buggy. Oh, yeah. Dalton and I would sit in the seat and drive the pony, and Libby and Marge would hang on the back of the buggy. Just hang on? Well, yeah, they'd hang, stand on the axle and hold the back of the seat. For four miles? Holy yep. Cow. Anyway, this one day, we're going to school, and uh, Marge says, oh, look at the nice flowers in the ditch. So the girls jumped off to pick the flowers. Just about that time, we wrapped the old horse on the rope of the line. We didn't know they was off. Oh. There was about three miles from school. <laughs> anyway, Dalton and I, we drove into the schoolyard, and we stopped in front of the school, give them time to get off, and then we drove on to the barn to put them. Without horses. looking. Without looking. We didn't know if they was there or not. Why should you turn around and look? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyhow, after Dalton I put the buggy and the horse away, we went in the school and the teacher says, Where's Libby and Marge? And we said, Didn't they come in the school? And the teacher said no. So right away we figured they'd gone to the can, you see. But anyhow, pretty soon in comes Marge. She's panting all over, sweating. She had run that three miles trying to catch us. Just about the time she'd catch up, we'd wrap the old horse up and get her on the trot. <laughs> and then she'd have to stop for a rest. But anyway, Libby, she turned around and went home. Oh. <laughs> but Marge was stubborn, you know. 
Yeah. She, she wouldn't stop. She's going to go to school. <laughs> you guys never once turned around and looked. No, I no, hell no, we didn't turn around. And look. We just knew they was there, that's all. Well, was that a one room school? Yeah. With grades one? Grade one, uh, eight. There was one five. guy in there that took grade ten. Oh. No, grade nine. Usually nine. Dalt was in grade eight. I was in grade seven. And Libby was in grade six. And I might as well go on with that. At Christmas time they had a spelling match. And there was a row of boys and a row of girls. There must have been about ten in each row. And at the top of this row, the boys' row, there was Irvin Megason. He was the grade niner. And then there was Dahl, he was the grade eight. And then there was me, I was grade seven. And I don't know who was below that. The rest of the boys was below that. Over on the other side, there was Effie Crookshank, she was the oldest girl. She was about my age. And then there was Libby, she's two years younger, and Marge and a few other odd ones. But anyway, they would give Irvin a word to spell, and he'd spell it. And then they'd pick another word and give it to the girl, and she'd spell that, and so on, back and forth until you get stuck on the word. Yeah, and if you yeah. get stuck, they will just pass the word on to the next one. Yeah. 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 Well, anyway, the teacher asked Irving to spell a certain word. The word is height. And Irving misspelled it. So he went and sat down. Then they give it to Effie across the line, and she misspelled it, so she went and sat down. And then it came back to Dalt, and he misspelled it. And I'm just sitting there shivering like a little dog, you know. Because you know how. Because I know how to spell it. And by gosh, you know, I took the, I was the winner of that spelling match. Yeah. <laughs> Big deal. <laughs> yeah, big deal. So what did you get? The women? Prize oh, or honor. Just the honor. Just the honor. <laughs> but I can still remember that. I knew how to spell height. Yeah. Spell it. Let's hear you spell it. H-E-I-G-H-T. Yes, you're right. <laughs> now I told you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Marge said that you used to take your lunches in a pail and sometimes they'd freeze in the winter before you got to school. Oh, well, yeah. Well, that sure. still could be. Oh, I yeah. have to too. Sure. And then you'd forget to bring them in from the cloakroom. Yep. Yeah. And they'd freeze again. And they'd be freeze, you'd have to eat frozen. Well, they wouldn't be frozen that hard, though. So was there a pot belly stove in the middle of the yep. school room? Yeah, pot belly stove. You've seen the picture of them. Yeah. Yep. Adult, he, adult, he got smart one day and he threw a twenty-two shell in the stove. <laughs> and it went off. Teacher gave him hell for that. <laughs> How did they find out it was him? No, oh, I don't know. I guess he owned up to it. Oh. So they necessarily wasn't in the center of the room. Really stuff, was it? Yes, it was. Is that right? Yeah. No, no, I find it was always in the corner. No, 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 no. It was, uh, there was usually two, uh, two rows of desks 
two rows of double desks, yeah. one on each side of the stove, and then up in front there was the teacher's platform of one foot high, and a stove pipe that went straight up, and then straight along the ceiling, and into the chimney. And we was going to the school at Hernfield School this time, and uh, we had a teacher that we hated. Oh, she was a rotten. Uh, you couldn't get nobody could get along with her, and she was giving a licking to somebody every day with a strap. But anyhow, Bert Crookshanks, the sister, daughter, brother of that Effie, he was in grade. This is a different school. He was in about grade nine or ten. And he had the job of lighting the stove in the morning. And he lived about uh, three miles from school. Oh, and the teacher didn't so, live right there. No, the teacher didn't live there. She boarded with one of the farmers close by. Oh. But anyhow, Bert came and he lit the stove. And then three or four of the other big boys came, and the stove was going good. And uh, the teacher wasn't there yet. And somebody says, I bet you I can fix it so the school will get all full of smoke. How are you going to do that? So somebody climbed up on top of the, put a chair on top of the stove climbed up on the chair and hit the stove pipe up the back and jammed it up against the back of the chimney at the other end of the school. And then the stove smoked because it couldn't draw any air. And the teacher come to school and the school was full of smoke. So we held school for a couple hours and finally the teacher sent us home. And the next morning we got word on the telephone, there'll be no school today. The teacher's got neurology of the eyes. <laughs> and that's the last we ever seen of her. Oh, so right, never saw her again? Never saw her again. She <laughs> must have quit. I don't know whether she quit or her eyes well, happened to her. What happened to her? I don't know. And you had a phone? Yeah, yeah. Phone hanging on the wall. One of those big box phones. Party line. Well, Party line. Something to do with nerves, isn't it? Right. Neurology. Yeah. Something to do with nerves. Yeah. Uh, what would be allergy of the eyes? An allergy. Oh, an allergy. Oh, oh, allergy. Yeah, allergic to the. Oh, yeah. yeah. I say neurology. Neuro they call it neurology, I think. Yeah, well, they call it neurology. Nerve. What's that? Neurology. Neurology. I don't know. Nerves. Well, what did you do for clothes in those days? Were they all home homemade? Oh no, no, no. Your clothes were they all homemade? By overalls, like the working clothes, farm work clothes, uh, denim, blue denim. You buy overalls with a bib on here, you know, you've seen them. Yeah. That's what they used to be like. Like the new, like the women wear overalls. Yeah. And they'd be down to your shoes, and on your feet, uh, some people would just wear, wear leather boots with heavy socks, and then others would have sheepskin boots with rubbers on to keep them dry, oh, yeah. or felt boots. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> but your shirts, were they all homemade? No, you buy the shirts too. Well, my oh. mother used to make shirts. 
don't think your mom but, sold but, too much, did she? Oh yeah, she wore out one of those old Eldridge sewing machines. Maybe she just show, sewed the girls' clothes. Mostly. Yeah, I don't think she ever made any uh, any clothes for the boys outside of knitting socks. All the socks were knitted. She used, she used to knit socks. She used to uh, three needles. Yeah, make rugs too. She used to make. She was uh, really good at knitting. Uh, you cook, you know. Oh yeah. She made a rug. About the first or second year we lived by Calgary, and she took it to the Stampede and put it in as an exhibition, and she had, uh, well I forget the pattern, but Calgary Stampede, like that, oh. moon shaped, yeah. in the middle of it. And uh, they tagged on her first prize. What did she make it? A old rag? Yeah, rags and a gunny sack. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she picked red rags for the letters. Yeah. And other colors for the border. <coughs> Probably more just got some of them. I wouldn't doubt she has. She has. Yeah. Well, what year did you move from Manitoba? But you were older then. Yeah, I was, let's see, I moved when I was 19. You just but, came by train? Yep. Yep, by train. <coughs> well, ah, that's a long story. First, my dad wanted to rent a farm in Alberta. And Uncle Joe lived there. And Uncle Joe got a hold of this farm right close to him. Yeah. And he rented it. But it was going to take two men to run it. Two outfits of horses. Oh, so he wanted help. So, uh... There was Art and Dalt and me and Art, four men. It took two men to run the one in Manitoba and two to run the one at Calgary. You mean Art and Dalt and you and Tyra? So Art and, Art and Dalt, Art got married the same year. Art and Dalt went to Calgary and Art told me there's a darn nice girl living down there. You better go and get her when we go to Calgary. Oh. That, that was Isla. Art told you that. Art told me that when we oh. left. <laughs> so anyway, when Art and Dalt got to Calgary, Genther, the guy that owned the farm, figured that wasn't a good idea. He decided he wanted the, my dad to come and stay with one of the boys. So Art came back to Manitoba, and Dalt came to Calgary. And then we, uh, Art and I, grew two crops in Manitoba. And then we uh, had an auction sale and came to, Man to Calgary. So your mom and all the kids came by train? Yep, they all came with by train. all your Furniture. No furniture, just uh, your personal possessions. She had a big trunk, one of those big trunks with her own yeah. top, and a whole bunch of boxes and stuff, just personal belongings, dishes I guess. But we had an auction sale and sold everything in furniture, what was it? There wasn't much furniture yeah. actually. And then you went by, from the railway station by wagon then? Yep, yep. Oh, that is that is only two miles from Shepherd, you see. Oh, the train stopped at Shepherd? Yeah, the train stopped oh, at Shepherd, yeah. and that's where we dumped all the oh, yeah. stuff off. Yeah. 
then the folks got off there. But when Art and I came, Art got married. We had the sale. Well, he came back. He came back and mar married Isla. Yeah, he came back and married Isla, and then Isla did the housekeeping, and my mother and Marge and Libby and Ira all came to Calgary, and they went to school. The kids were going to school, and. Uh, That fall, so what, second, that would have been about 19... 27, 27. 27. That fall, Art went and bought a brand new star car. And we got in it in Calgary, or in Manitoba, it started to snow. We get in the car and we head west. And uh, we hit the deep snow at Regina, and they said the highway is good as far as Moose Jaw. The snow plow had just gone up. So we followed the snow plow to Moose Jaw, and that's as far as we got. We had to store the car over winter and catch the train to Calgary. Oh. tell a lot of stories about that, but a lot of them is better untold. Huh. And then you and you and Art worked on the farm. Yeah, in Manitoba. Yeah, but when you came to Calgary. When we came to Calgary, Dalton and I rented a portion of the farm, and Paul rented the other portion. Oh. And Art? He was married. So he was married, and he bought a share in Featherson store in Ogden. Oh, did he? I never knew that. Yeah, he had a share in that. Oh. And he, between him and, and Featherson, they run that store for a couple of years. And I think Featherson finally kicked Art out. I don't know what happened there. But Art finally quit it, you know. I thought he had a service station. No. So no. that was Old Man Featherston, not the Wally, that, Wally that, or Walter. That was Old Man Featherston, yeah. Oh. And then... And did Art live in Ogden then? He lived in the back of the store. Oh. Yep. He and I lived. Him and Iowa. Oh, I didn't know that. Huh. That's where Roy was born. Oh. Is that right? Roy was the first little brat. Yeah. Yeah, he sure was a brat. I saw Iowa. One day he was at Fox's and we went down to take Saskatoon down. A coombe way down. This is up north. Yeah. yeah. And uh, when we got the berries, I had two pails of Saskatoon, and Roy kept kicking it going up the hill. Carry me, Mom, carry me. She ended up carrying them, and we, Mrs. Fox and I, and said, leave him. He'll, he'll come. He won't yeah. stay down there. You know? But Iowa, you know Iowa. She picked him up and carried her in there. She was only a little. Had Roy on her back and a bucket of cherries in each hand. No, the Saskatoons. <laughs> yeah. He just kept kicking her, I guess, until she got up on her. Huh. Well, where did Dog meet Pearl? Uh, when I first came to Calgary, Dalt had a friend, Andy Johnson. 
Oh, yeah, and that's Pearl's brother. Yeah, he was a cowboy. He was the black sheep. Yep. Yeah. And uh, there was uh, Andy Johnson and Tommy Jackson. Tommy Jackson used to live in Valleyfield. Oh, yeah. He was a dairyman, oh. him and his dad. And Andy Johnson lived on the farm up half a mile north of the highway there, the old number one, the old one, old highway. Yeah, just a mirror. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And Andy rode down to our place. Dull seemed to know him. I don't know if he knew him or not. But anyway, Andy was on horseback and always a talker. And I don't know how we come to meet the Johnson women. I guess that dances. And Pearl was just a kid then, actually. She was a lot younger than yeah. Pearl, was she? Yeah, she was younger than Margaret or Annie. Oh. Quite a bit. But but anyway, Dalton got going with oh. Pearl later on. Younger than Margaret or Annie. Yeah. yeah, but then you and Dalt moved up north, didn't you? Well, in, in 1928, Dalt and I sold the crop. This is in 28. When everything was booming. Yeah. Oh, that. Oh, everything was booming then. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Dalton and I sowed the crop at Shepherd. And then Art and Dalton and my dad get in the car with a fellow by the name of Detweiler. Well, what kind of car was it? It was, uh, I don't know what it was. I wasn't in it. Oh. Detweiler's car. Oh. Detweiler is a real estate guy for the CPR. The CPR has got lots of open land up in that country. Wild. No railroad for 25 miles. Oh. But the railroad's coming in from Lloyd Minster. Yeah. So it's going to come right across this property that Art and Dalt and my dad oh, bought. Yeah. Oh. Two sections. Oh, I didn't know they bought property. Oh yeah, thirteen dollars an acre. Cheap. So after Dalt and I got the crop seeded, they get in the car and went up and bought this land. We came back, and uh, we took the crop off, that was in 28. Took the crop off, had a heck of a good crop of wheat and oats and on the farm at Shepherd. And then we struck up north in 29. With, uh, <coughs> with a new 28 share that Dalton and I had and a Model A Ford truck we bought and then Art had his, what the heck was it? Model A Ford pickup, brand new. And we struck up north and we broke up about 400 acres of land, picked rocks, and in 1930, we seeded that breaking, and we had about 40 bushels of the acre on it. Is that good? And we run out of money. And we went to the bank, and the bank wouldn't give us enough money to buy twine to cut oh. this crop. Oh, is that right? And we finally had to get 
Well, Dad back the check before the bank would oh, give us yeah. the money. Yeah. Anyway, we got the crop all thrashed, a heck of a good crop. Went to haul it to town, and it was worth 21 cents a bushel. It cost about six cents a bushel to haul it into town, into the elevator. Yeah. So it's a losing proposition. The next year, Dalton May rented a farm up there. We quit that. Dalton May rented a farm in 30 and 31. And then Dalton came back to Calgary and I stayed up there. This was in the hungry 30s, but this time. Yeah, well, 1929 was yeah, the, 29 the stock was, market crash, wasn't that's it? That's right. So well, what, and so you just left the farm that you bought? Yeah, just walked off. Oh, was it, did you buy it cash or was the bank, we, did the uh, bank own some of it? Or? Oh yeah, yeah, we just put a down payment on it. Oh. And we bought a tractor, Dalton and I bought a case tractor, and Art had his IHC tractor. And we pulled three plows apiece, and broke up a heck of a lot of land there. A lot of hard work, dry and no rain. Jack Warren says that's the only dry, the only crop failure he had all the time he farmed up there. Oh, she was in 29. And that's when we had uh, So that bread. was near Warren's then? You... We was about four miles from Warren's. Where they lived, where, where we visited them? That's right. Yeah. Oh. Out on that farm. Oh. Well, it must be four, more than four miles. Well, I don't know. It was from Vanessa School to Moyerton School, which would be, well, it might have been five miles. Oh. But five miles in those days is like 40 miles now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's where you met Mom then, through. Yeah. We'd, uh, Cause we spent about three years up there in the hungry 30s and they would have a tournament with playing ball. Oh yeah, you were ball. That's where we were playing ball. And we just happened to have one of the better teams in the... You see there was a whole bunch of them, Moyer and Early and oh, a couple of them across the river. There was quite a bunch of us had a league, and we won most everything. Huh. Before you were born, we, they had a ball game across the river. Hmm. Yes, I sure do. We took my old horse. <laughs> this, they, they had a, a ball tournament or a picnic across the river. At, what's the name of that? It doesn't matter. Anyway, one of the guys over there come over to our place and wanted me to go over and play ball with them. So of course I'm a, I'd go any place to have a game of ball. Yeah. So I get on the old comet and rode across the river. And Comet was Mom's horse. Yep. And this Comet had feet on him like a, a dinner plate. And we're over there and we're on the end of about the third inning. They made, they put me in as catcher. Yeah. But anyhow, it rained like a son of a gun. And what was his name? We call him the stovepipe. He was a dark. He wasn't Negro. He was, I don't know what he was. He was dark, complexioned, traffic. 
and he, he married a trafficked girl in Wainwright. And then they came out to the picnic. She was Ukrainian, I think. And she's all dressed in her wedding dress. Oh, they got married that day. They got married that day. And then they came out to the picnic. And it rained to beat hell. But she was in out of the storm. And after the rainstorm, the picnic's all over. The ball game's all over. Everything's soft and wet. Yeah. So I get on old Comet, started home, and I caught up to this wedding party. There was old man traffic sitting in the front seat of a Democrat, and the guy we called the stovepipe sitting with his brand new wife in the back seat. I'm riding along beside the trail. It was just a more of a cow path through the trees on the river hill, yeah. yellow clay, with saucers of water, like a footprint, you know, that yeah. had been packed down. Yeah. And I'm riding right along beside the girl and I'm talking to them. An old comet had to put his foot right on that top of that <laughs> yeah. dish of water. And, I'm, and it splattered that this was yellow clay. Yeah. And it went right up and it got her all the way down the whole darn side of her nice, nice white dress. wedding dress. And I bet it was a nice dress too. <laughs> it was a nice dress. She's there pretty oh, well. fancy note. So I said, I guess I better ride on. I'm sorry that happened. <laughs> what could I do? Yeah. Should have kicked the horse. I did. Oh, did you? But to kick him it didn't matter. Yeah. So that was the extent of that game. So Art, Art must have moved back to Calgary then. There's no, Art moved up to. Oh, to Eilie or something. Up to uh, St. Lina, right up in the bush. Oh. That's where Isla's mother and dad went to, oh. right out in the bush. And that's where Art uh, spent his tough years. And that was before Roy was born or after? That was after Roy was born, oh. and then Ross and Earl came along up there. Oh, yeah. uh, well, I'll see you in early. <laughs> I stayed with Foxes for a couple of years, because I didn't see any sense coming to Calgary, because there were so many people in Calgary then, and I started buying cattle. Oh. I had a little bit of money. And I started buying cattle, and you could get a good cow for twenty dollars. And I bought a yearling calf for three dollars. And I had about I don't know eighteen twenty head. And I figured by the time by the time the price comes up, I'm going to have a bunch of cattle to sell because it was free range, you see, running oh, yeah. down the river. Yeah. But anyhow, I had to feed them in the winter time. So I started putting up hay, and by God, you know, before the depression was over, them damn cattle broke me trying to feed them. Buying hay and putting up hay and, and uh, oh, heck, there was just no money. The depression lasted too long. Yep, the depression beat me. So after that was over, I still had a little bit of money. And that's when I moved to Fox's. I rented that farm we was on for a while. And that's when, oh gee, Frenchy, Frenchy and uh, 
He's a little short guy. Short. We used to call him Shorty, yes. We batched over there for a couple of years in that house. And then I went to Fox's, and the Frenchman went to Lloyd Minster, and Shorty went back to Shaw. <coughs> but anyhow, I stayed at Fox's for a couple of years. I hauled straw for cattle, and Morris hauled wood for the house. Morris couldn't haul wood, and I hated cutting wood. Or Morris couldn't haul straw, and I hated cutting wood. So that worked out good. I'd haul a load of half straw a day, and he would get a load of wood. Yeah, load of, yeah. So Art Dalt then moved back to Calgary. Yeah, he came back. He brought the truck. That was in in the agreement. Oh, gee, I could talk for an hour here. You see, when I was younger, first there was my dad. He was the yeah. boss. Yeah. Then there was Art. He was the next boss. Yeah. Then there was Dolph. He was the next boss. And then there was me. By the time it got down to me, you didn't need a boss. <laughs> <laughs> well, then when we got rid of my dad, his, he went on his own and left yeah. the three boys. Then it starts the boss. Dalt's the next. And they still don't need a boss yeah. down there. And finally, Art went north, and Dalton and I went together. And Dalt, he was the boss. And I didn't have much to say about it. But anyway, when we finished, the, when we split up up north there, we had a little bit of money in the bank. We went to the bank, and drew it all out. No, we didn't draw it out. We got a uh, bank book and so on a piece. Oh, yeah. So I had money in the bank in my name, and I didn't even know how to get it out of the bank. Oh. That's how stupid I was. And here I am, 20 years old. Don't tell everyone. That's right. Because the others had already done it. They, they were the bosses. Had, sure, they they did all the money work. I didn't care. It was all right with me. I didn't have to worry about it. So then when he left, he took the truck. Dalt came back to Calgary with a truck. And he went working for Coal Pits Fox Farm. They had a big dairy ranch, a fox farm. And he was trucking for them for a while, I don't know how long. And I stayed up at Fox's for nothing, trying to raise cattle and going broke. Not went up to St. Lina and went broke. Screwdriver, hmm. stuck her nose straight down, shut the engine off. That's when I thought the earth was coming up to dash me. Yeah. Well, how did you do? How come you got to ride in a plane? <laughs> do you know the pilot or what? Seems like people can get rides. So. We were up north. Well, that same truck. And we came down to the stampede. I'd organized this. And he says, let's go to the stampede. And there was about nine of us. Stan Allen, Stan and Valora Allen, and Art and Isla, Dalton and I, uh, the whole ball team was in this. Yeah, the whole damn ball team was there except one. We were one man short. Elliot's in Redmond. We came down from up north in the truck. We had made a seat in the box. 
and we bunked in the folks' house, or not in the house, but in a bunk car, a thrashing bunk car, in their yard. That's where we, that was our home base. Yeah. And from there we went to Turner Valley to see the sights. Did you ever get to Turner Valley when the... Yeah, yeah. When the yeah they just saw the flares. The fires. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, we was out there and we climbed the oil well, a bunch of us. You should have got a job there. Tried. Oh. Tried to, Dalton and I. We slept out beside that gull during Roylet fire every night in the old ship. And uh, we would we'd get up as close as we could. No, this is in the middle of winter. And around the fire, it was all burnt. And then there's a line of green grass, and we parked just on the outside of the green grass. So the fire wouldn't get too heavy at night and burn us up. We slept out there for about a week. Comfortably. Oh yeah, <laughs> it was all right. One in the front, one in the back seat. We tried to get a job. We had a job there for two days. Big in the basement, pick and shovel. That's enough for me, pick and shovel. So what happened when you went to the stampede? You were gonna, you yeah. went, that's how you got your airplane ride. Yeah, we, uh, we get in the truck and we went out to the airport up in Renfrew and there was a guy out there taking people up for rides, $15 a shot. Oh. And Art and Dalton, no, Dalton and I, I went first, and then Dalton went, and who else? One other guy went. I forget who it was. But Dalton and I had different pilots. Dalton was in a two-winger. And they was doing this kind of stuff, and uh, oh, they looped the loop and a few other odd things. But he was in a faster plane, just a two winger. Mm -hmm. I was in the bit one, and when he shut the motor off, all I could hear was the air rushing through the wires that held the wings. You know, brace wires? Yeah. Struts, I guess they call Struts. it. Huh. So fifteen dollars. Yep. Gee, that'd be pretty expensive. Uh, it was. It was. You'd probably work well mom said she worked for ten dollars a month. Yes, that was a month's work. I think it was fifteen dollars. It's still quite high. Okay. Maybe it was five, I don't know. Might have been five dollars. Maybe it was. Yeah, but if it was five dollars, everybody'd want to go on it. Well, it was either five or fifteen. And I think there was only three of us went. Oh. And I think it was only five minutes. Oh. Huh. That's from the point. Everybody, they would want everybody to go. Yeah. Well, they wouldn't be able to handle the crowd. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. What crowd those days? Well, there'd still be quite a few. Oh, there was, yeah, there was Stampede quite a crowd around there. Stampede week, everybody had to have there. either walk there or you had to have a car. Yes, one else else. Ran there. that's right. Yeah. Or a horse. A horse or some kind or a car. Well, near here. At that time, there was quite a few cars around. Had to be, yes. And there were this guy used to take us over there as kids on special Sundays to see the airplanes. We had to walk. And you, you know that nose, nose yeah. hill? Yeah. yeah. When you get up in an airplane, that hill disappears. It's flat. Yeah. <laughs> you never know there was a hill there. Hmm. Earl took you for the ride in the airplane. 
Oh, yeah, I went for right to the rural. Stupid oh, idiot. Wasn't <laughs> Jesus Christ. You know, I, was, I was almost scared. Earl was taking flying lessons. And he came over one day. He said, Do you want to go for a ride? And I said, Sure. So we went out to the airport. And he did his desk work, whatever it was, and put his money down and we went out to this plane. It was a... Uh, I forget, I think it was a two, uh, four-winger, Biplum. Earl? Yeah, Earl. Wouldn't have four wings, would it? Well, I don't I remember. Have just a small yeah. wing well, over top. Over top. Yeah. Oh, it might I have see. been. Yeah, it might yeah, have been. Yeah. But anyway, he walked around the plane and shook the rudder or whatever you call them to see if the cables were all hooked up. And then we climbed into this plane. Her first, yeah, it had a self starter on it too. And he got in the back seat and I was in the front seat. Of course, the back seats were the controls were. And damn sure, wait a minute, no, it's got to be. Side side, I think he sat beside him, it would have to. It's got to be. But then anyway, when he started that motor, it sounded like the the worst damn tractor you ever started. <laughs> oh, it was a terrible sounding thing. But we went up and flew out over Ogden and then out around over Dolph's place, back in and up to the airport and landed. Did he fly it well? Oh yeah, he, he had no problem. Pardon me? Buttons together. Record and play together. A half mile from the U.S. border. Yeah. And it's dry over there, too. I don't want my own and there was rum running. Because they're picking you it could, up in September. You could make oh. <laughs> alcohol in Saskatchewan, but you couldn't sell it. So uh, these guys in Montreal right today, the big shots, what's their names? Um, you know, uh, what are we talking about? The Mafia. Bats, Labatt's Brewery guy? Oh, Labatt's, yeah. Uh, John Labatt. John Labatt's. No, no, no. No, the guy that runs it makes it. Yeah, it's not John Labatt's. Uh, there's a whole family of them. Oh, okay. And, yeah, the, uh, and that family came from northern Saskatchewan. They was making whiskey, making Moonshine. Canada dry whiskey. Or, uh, Canadian. Canadian, Canadian Club. Club whiskey. Yeah. And that's their own recipe, a receipt recipe, is what yeah, you call it. recipe. But anyhow, they'd make this stuff in northern Saskatchewan, and they'd haul her down to a store about 10 miles from the U.S. border. And they'd store it great big storehouse. i seen it. It was a great big storehouse as big as this building. Yeah. And then they'd back a truck in there. They'd load this truck up with a load of liquor. A truck then, of course, was just like a, a pickup now put in there. Mm -hmm. Small tires and great big wheels. Mm -hmm. No power steering. But anyhow, they'd order a little of liquor, <laughs> and as soon as it got dark, they'd head for the U.S. border. Mm -hmm. To smuggle and some back, eh? Big run. And uh, the Mounties, the Canadian Mounties, was on horseback. <laughs> so the horse was in the water, so there's no Mounties out. But the U.S. police is over there. And they'd have to take it over in the dark and give it to somebody, just hand it across the border, and take their money and go back to town. 
But anyhow, any Daniel, my friend, used to box with him. Yeah. <laughs> you boxed? Grandpa, you boxed? Well, you didn't box. But anyhow, any Daniel, would order uh, a case of liquor from Brandon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We would come in on the train Saturday night into Westgate. We only trained one train a week. Enoch lived a half a mile from the border. He would come in down Saturday night, pick up his case of whiskey, or two or three, whatever he could get, take it home, and he went out with a team of sleigh, and he loaded up a half a load of wheat. And he put the liquor in there. Put the liquor in underneath there? In the wheat on top of that half a load. And then he put the other half a load on top of the liquor. And then he headed well, for the I States. All so these wheat over to the across the land, which the was legal. No problem. Just take it no over way. and dump it in the elevator. <laughs> but when he no, didn't get over there, <coughs> he had to make it so he got there just at noon. Because when he'd get there, there'd be a lineup of things that happened my lawn. Mm -hmm. wanting to get in. Mm -hmm. to unload. The elevator man would come 12 o'clock and he would come along walking. He's back about 15 ways. The elevator man say, Well, it's lunch, time. I got to shut her down. I got to eat. So he closed the big He'd uh, close the doors, then everybody would take off over town to have some meat. And Enoch and the elevator man would stick around, and then they would pull Enoch's team out of the line and put it up into the elevator, and they would dump the wheat out into the pit, and catch the liquor as it slid out, and then the elevator man would hide that, and then he'd bootleg it across the line. That's pretty, that's cool. Uh, and Enoch was getting, I don't know how much money he made out of it. They were, were, they, were they that strict going across the line in those days? No. Uh, it was all mounted, like mounted for his horseback. Uh, but those damn horses could outrun a car. Yeah. Sure they could, they could outrun a car. Uh, and uh, sometimes the Mounties would ride up and down there and patrol the line. But 99 times out of 100, you'd just drive across and never see them out there. It wasn't nearly as strict as it was in those days. That oh, didn't no. happen. Oh, well, the folks, my dad, he used to. Oh. He used to hook the horse to the buggy. And him and my mom would get in the buggy and away they'd go for 12 miles from our place.